Grade nines, in this section, we're going to look at the effect of returns by debtors on the accounting equation. Um, as with the previous explanation, when we sold to debtors on um, account and on credit, I will also explain this one on the whiteboard because I just feel that a little bit more visual effects will make it a bit easier to understand, but I'm going to try my best um, on, or on the PowerPoint presentation as well. All right, so what we need to remember um, when a debtor returns stock to our store that we basically have to reverse the original sales transaction or at least part thereof if the debtor doesn't return anything, everything. So once again, we will work with an A part and a B part. That is very important to remember. Now, what I've done here is um, on your right-hand side, I actually showed you the original transaction where we sold to the data. It just makes a bit more sense if we then work from that um, to um, undo the, the transaction or at least part thereof. So what will happen in the A part and what will happen in the B part? In the A part, we will need to indicate that the sales, the sales income has now decreased because the data has returned some things. So we haven't sold for the big full amount anymore. And with that, it means that the data now owes us less. So we will have to um, reverse that transaction. In the B part, we need to show that now some of the stock um, has been received back and we can put it back on the shelves. And as a result of the fact that our sales has decreased, so has our cost of sales expense also decreased. So we have to indicate that as well in the B part. So let's have a look at what happened originally when we sold to the data. Um, in the sales account, we credited sales because sales is an income. Now, when we need to um, um, show that the data has brought stock back and that our sales has decreased, we will obviously have to write on the debit side. Please just be aware of the fact that we said we're not allowed to write on the debit side of sales. So when we do the reversal, we're going to create that new account called debtors allowances. Originally, when we sold to the data, debtors control is an asset. So when the um, debtors debt increased, we wrote on the debit side. Now the data owes us less. So we will go and make an entry on the credit side of debtors control. With the B part, originally, when we sold some of the trading stock or gave it to the debtor, um, in obviously in return for the fact that he now owes us the money, we wrote on the credit side of trading stock because my trading stock asset decreased. If the debtor now brings stock back, we're going to re-enter that um, stock onto our shelves and therefore we'll have to write on the debit side. Now with cost of sales, what happened originally, cost of sales is an expense. So when that transaction took place, we said we needed to indicate what was the expense part of the sales transaction. What did it cost me originally to buy that stock that we're now selling? So that decreased the owner's equity. Now, some of the stock has been returned by the data. So it means my cost of sales expense also has to decrease. Now, when an expense decreases, I obviously will have to go right on the credit side of that account. But what is the net effect then? It means my owner's equity will increase. So that's just in short a summary. Let's move on to the more full explanation. Okay, so we're still using Kale Borne, where we sold to him in, in the debtor's um, journal um, um, example that we did. Now we're saying he's returned some damaged goods to the value of 600 Rand. The cost price for that transaction was 400 Rand, and we issued credit note 0 to 1. Right, so let's go through all our questions that we have to ask ourselves in order to figure this out. So what is the source document? It is the duplicate credit note. Why the duplicate credit note? Because we said the original document always goes to the client. So the original credit note is given to the client. So write that down in your um, um, accounting equation table. There by source document duplicate 
credit note. So what happens in the April? You have to reverse the sales amount or show that sales has decreased. Very important, I've typed it here in yellow as well. We must remember that when we work with returns, we need to create a new account in the place of sales because we are not allowed to write on the debit side of sales and that account is called debtors allowances. Now, debtors allowances is what type of account? It's owner's equity and expense. If sales is an income, then debtors allowances must be an expense. What do all expenses do to the owner's equity? An expense decreases the owner's equity. So under owner's equity, we're going to write minus 600 rand. And my reason is debtors allowances is an expense. So because my sales decrease, so the owner is not going to get that much profit anymore. Good. So who owed us this money that we um, 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 originally had the sales transaction for? The debtor, Kylie Borney, owed us that money. But now he returns some of the stock. So what happens to that amount that he owes us? It decreases. Remember, we said all the money that's owed by debtors is summarized under debtors control, which is an asset. So if the client owes us less, it now means what happens to debtors control? It decreases. So under assets, we write minus 600 rand. And the reason is the debtors debt or debtors control decreases. So this is the A part. If we move to the B part, here we need to show now that the stock that the debtor has returned is put back on the shelves. So remember, we spoke in the previous presentation about the fact that even if it's damaged or broken, we are still putting it technically, theoretically back on the shelves. It is to keep our records up to date and to, make, to help us to, to take the process further um, with the damage and broken stock. All right, so what did we sell to the client? We sold trading stock. What type of account is trading stock? It's an asset. So now when the client brings the stock back, what happens to the trading stock on my shelves? It obviously increases. There's now more. So under owners, under assets, we write plus 400 rand. And what is my reason? My trading stock has now increased with that 400 rand cost price. Remember, we always enter trading stock at the cost price, the price we originally paid for it. All right. Now, the moment that the client brings that stock back to us or sends it back to us, we also need to indicate that the cost of sales expense is now smaller because if my sales decrease, that means my cost of sales expense must also decrease. We didn't have that much sales or the big amount of sales anymore. So therefore, the cost of sales needs to decrease. Now, be awake here. Cost of sales is what type of an account? It's an expense. Therefore, it affects the owner's equity. Now, what happens if an expense becomes smaller? It means there's more profit for the owner at the end. So if an expense decreases, it then means it increases or the owner's equity increases. So under owner's equity, we're going to write plus 400. And now please be careful. My cost of sales expense decreases. So can you see cost of sales is that always that odd one out. Under owner's equity, there's a plus 400 in the amount, but my reason is a minus. Cost of sales expense decreases. Okay, great nines. Let's see if you can do the activity. There's only one transaction, if I'm not mistaken. See if you can figure out how to analyze that transaction on the accounting equation for us. 